Good evening. I'd like to call the Columbia County Board of Commissioners October 6th the meeting to order. If you'll bow your heads and pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings you continue to bestow on Columbia County. Pray that uh, you bless those first responders, sheriff's deputies, the firemen, the ambulance personnel. Father, all those folks who rush into trouble to take care of us, we just pray that you bless them and protect them. Pray now that you'd bless this meeting, give us wisdom and guidance in any decision that needs to be made. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Understand we got a Boy Scout here tonight? Young man, Boy Scout? There is it. I was told, where is he? He's in the back. Oh, why don't you come up and lead us in the pledge? <clears throat> Give us your name first, please. My name is Ron. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, visible, liberty, and I'm going to jump ahead on the agenda. You can, young man, why don't you tell us uh, what school you go to and why you're here? Very good. Well, welcome. I'm proud of you. Commissioners, you have the uh, you have the minutes from the meeting of September 15th in your package. If they meet with your approval, I'll accept a motion to do so. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. <clears throat> I believe the agenda is fairly set, Mr. Johnson. One item for executive session, Mr. Chairman. Yes. <clears throat> I want to welcome everyone here th this evening and thankful that uh, it's October and we finally have a little bit of break in the heat. And I, I, uh, I introduced our Boy Scout, but we also have some Columbia County Youth Leadership folks here tonight. Where are they? Why don't you stand up and Tell us which school you go to and give us your name. Well, it's great to meet Malir. you. Malir. Hopefully you can learn something. What? Malir. Malir. Where have I heard that name before? I don't know who she belongs to. We have another special recognition. <coughs> we have Bill Botham, the man, the myth, the radio legend, who is the community <laughs> services August employee of the month. Yeah. Mr. Gailis is going to give you that award. Bill, come on down. <laughs> Evening, Bill. Hey, Richard. It's my pleasure to see Bill recognized for this. Uh, anytime I, I come to an event, I always come early, and uh, I see Bill there making sure everything is, is all right, always uh, encouraging his folks. So... Um, the citation per your request. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hand this over to John. If you... Sure. Well, uh, a lot of things in our area slowed down quite a bit due to COVID, but one thing that didn't was the park rentals in particular, Evanstown Center Park graduations and um, concerts and other things. We have a concert coming up this week, and Bill handles that for us. He handles those contracts and works through rentals for those, and he's just been hitting it hard since he, since all that came back. So, and uh, never a complaint, always out there, um, sweating as, as I think Rachel put in, into the, to the write up. So just a great attitude always, uh, extremely unmatched in his customer service. And if you've ever seen him on the phone with uh, a mother of a one-year-old wanting to rent a birthday pavilion, it's, it's like magic, so we're, <laughs> we're happy to have him part of the team, and I think Rachel has a few interesting haikus that she wants to read for you. Haikus. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so Bill is a wealth of knowledge, dad jokes, and a master of haikus. So, Bill, I've written these for you. Uh oh, Turning out way better than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> you can take them home. Pretends to dislike most people, idle chit chat, secret heart of gold. Aww. Aww. Pants and mid calf socks, 
loafers in a grassy field, smiling through the sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bill Hill is your, your, uh, your plaque, well-deserved employee of the month, and $100 in a day off? Yep. And the tax ban got to us, so I'm sorry. No, I don't mind that a bit. Hey, <laughs> thank you very much. And who, who records the minutes here? Because I'd like a copy for my review next month. <laughs> <laughs> Everything they said. That'll be in the next Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Right. Yeah, I'll be Bill. Thank you. Looking for a picture. Thank you all very much. I wanted to go with a Bill. Dean Martin roast type format, but <laughs> very time didn't permit. <laughs> well, pictures, we have a couple of folks who have asked to speak tonight. Um, first, I'm going to ask Mrs. Wendy Sawyer to come up. <clears throat> Wendy, and if you'll just come up and state your name and uh, address for the record, and you have five minutes to say whatever you want to say. Right there in the microphone. Okay. Um, I'm Wendy Sawyer. Do I? You're good. No, 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 no talking to the microphone. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Wendy Sawyer, and I'm a member of the League of Christian Voters. And the reason I'm here is, let me give you the bottom line up front. Sorry, so bottom line up front. We're, looking, we're seeking funding for a drop box in Columbia County. We started mm -hmm. this process back in August when we thought there was a box in um, Columbia County, and we found out there wasn't when we requested um, one through the um, Board of Elections. They uh, originally uh, um, disapproved it through a formal letter, and then at the subsequent um, board meeting, but on the 28th of September, they held a special meeting and decided that they will go ahead and approve recommend approval for a drop box, um, one drop box on the location of Evans Board of Elections, which is right here. Um, however, there was some question about the funding for that. Is it going to be through state or is it going to be through the county? So I believe the chairman, Mr. Wiggins, requested to the board, the commissions, for funding for that. Um, drop box. So we are just asking, exploring you to go ahead and fund that. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Jenny Roberts. Is there Miss Jenny Roberts who'd like to speak? Five minutes. Name and address for the record, please. Yes. Jenny Roberts, 815 Cape Cod Court, Evans. Um, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, I greet you and congratulate you for having the privilege to serve the greatest community in this country, according to Money Magazine. That's awesome. I agree with him. <laughs> But some of the reasons that Evans was selected, according to the magazine, was because of its culture, its diverse population, and its high income. I am a pr I'm a proud, uh, proud to be a part of this community and have been a tax-paying citizen of this community for almost 30 years. Tonight, I stand before you not as a Republican or a Democrat, but I stand as a citizen to represent concerned citizens of the they are concerned not about any particular party. They are concerned about the ability of every citizen to exercise their constitutional right to vote. Uh, the 15th Amendment, um, United States Constitution, says that the federal government and each state uh, prohibits the, uh, the federal government and, e and, and each state from denying a citizen the right to vote based on the citizen's race, color, or uh, previous condition of servitude. That was ratified in 1870. Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, we are in troubling times. The COVID-19 face over the fears, over the fears of using the postal services will greatly 
impact the voting process, the diverse nature of our community, the military, the elderly, the isolated, the sick. Yes, we have some poor people in this community. It depends on others for transportation to get to the polls. There are those of us who may be afraid to show up at the polls because of the threats and the unlawful poll watchers that was asked to come to the polls. The denial of the right to vote does not end with available polls. No, it extends <clears throat> to the denial of available resources to support distressing conditions that limit an individual to access polling places. It has come to our attention that the Board of Elections had made a unilateral decision to deny installation of ballot boxes in this county. This decision was made without apparent assessment of needs or visibility. We have concerned, we the concerned citizens, some who are here tonight, found out about this decision not to have ballot boxes in the county through a third party. We began to ask questions uh, of the community and found that no one knew of this decision. We were both alarmed and concerned. Now, according to the state guidelines, the information regarding drop boxes should be posted on the home page no later than the day of installation of boxes. And as of today, it is not there. I and others attended the Board of Elections call meeting on September 28th as well. During the meeting, we heard the chairman of the board in response to a question from one of the attendees that this is a Republican county. Another time he was heard saying, we are not going to have a ballot box in this county. And if we do, it will be one and it will be here at the Board of Election. I was amazed considering the board was bipartisan and the chair was a Democrat. I failed to see the relevance in that statement until I did some research and found that there is a fight across the country to limit or deny access to ballot boxes. Many states have been using ballot boxes for years without incident. It is only now that this has become a perceived problem. The reasons given for not providing ballot box are these. <clears throat> Number one, lack of available funds. It was stated that the spending has exceeded $153,000 over budget. That the application for the state grant to fund ballot boxes has not responded. And the cost of a drop box, according to Mystic Miss Gay, is $2,300 plus $500 in a concrete slab. And the cost of one box to include monitoring, according to Mr. Wiggins, exceeds $12,000. I called Richmond County and I was told by Ms. Bailey that the cost of their boxes was $21 to $2,200. Uh, $50 for two workers per day to manage the boxes. She did not give me a cost for the monitoring. Mr. Chair, fellow commissioners, it is very concerning to me that the main reasons given for not providing ballot boxes in this county is because of fear. This should be very embarrassing for you considering Richmond County, whose medium income is $39,000, compared to Columbia County, $76,000. The best city in the country to live can't afford a ballot box? Ah, what headliners for the media that would be. It is very concerning that obviously the use of ballot boxes was not a consideration during budget planning. It appears to be an afterthought. I have planned a few budgets in my lifetime, and I know you must have a little foresight to plan and anticipate needs for the following year. Use of drop boxes may not have been available at the time, but the anticipation of the community's needs for access facing these challenging times should certainly have prompted more research to see what the rest of the country is doing. A large segment of the country have been using drop boxes. A funding request was, according to Augusta Chronicle, being submitted to you, the commissioners, from Ms. Gay, for funding. It stated that you would consider this request for funding the box at this meeting. Imagine my surprise when I saw the agenda and it wasn't even on there. Another problem presented by the board was acquiring adequate, pl adequate placement for the boxes on county or municipal property. Larry Wiggins, who's the chair, stated that it must be on county property, which is difficult to find, and acquiring, and acquiring permission from municipalities, other agencies to place box on the property is too timely. According to Chapter 183-1, Georgia Election Code Subject 183-1-14, which deals with absentee voting, uh, there are guidelines for that 
to be done. I just wanted to, to let you know, I called Grovetown, spoke with the county clerk. He informed me that Columbia County of Board of Elections are the ones who facilitate this and referred me back to the Board of Elections. I find it very hard um, to think of a phone call being too timely, arrange something like that. Final reason for lack of ballot boxes is they were late in addressing this issue because they didn't receive any response or any inquiries until August the 28th, and that was from an organization. Furthermore, there was no request for ballot boxes from the June election, and they received 16,000 ballots, and it was the first time ballot boxes were used in the state. Therefore, the assumption appears to be because of these reasons, there was no need for ballot boxes. Mr. Wiggins stated, according to Augusta Chronicle, we have no intention of going beyond one box in this election. Sounds like a predetermined decision without regard to taxpayers of this community. I am not sure why decisions are based on response and inquiry rather than need and access. We have approximately 144,000 registered voters in this county. 16,000 ballots in the primary gives very little insight on the potential increase of absentee ballots for the November 3rd election. Considering the challenges we face, I know we have 47 polling places, two locations for early voting, but with the current disruption with the postal services, people who fear their vote will not be counted, vulnerable population, military, and others who can't get to the polling sites or certainly should be a consideration. We ask to consider, we ask you to consider the following facts as you make your decisions tonight. The place in a box in front of the Board of Election is redundant. Since you can walk inside and leave your ballot, it serves no purpose. It is not meeting the needs of the people. The CDC and EAC, EAC, which is the Election Assistance Commission, recommends that there be one ballot box for every 15,000 voters. CDC recommends this to enable no contact ballot. EAC recommends this for access. The Secretary of State stated that every county would have at least one ballot box. In the 2016 election, one out of six registered voters na nationwide cast their ballots using drop box. There are opportunities for ballot box funding from other nonprofit organizations, CTCL being one of those. In conclusion, Mr. Chair and fellow commissioners, I know that we are less than a month away from Election Day, and early voting will begin Monday. That tells me that having a ballot box in Columbia County is a dim prospect. It is our hope that this is not taken lightly. Our request, nonetheless, is the following. We request that you provide funding for ballot boxes, more than one, Boxes be placed in areas of need. Ensure the long-term planning for drop boxes for including, be included in budget planning. And that there will be more visibility when decisions are made that impact or impede the rights of citizens. We know, according to Augusta Chronicle, that Mr. Wiggins stated that there will be consideration for drop boxes next year. But considering the outcome of this year, when the demand is greatest, have very little faith in that occurring. I thank you for your time, and I pray that the values printed on your stationery, pride, professionalism, respect, integrity, 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 dedication, and excellence plays out in your decision making tonight and in your future. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Just for point of information, the uh, the process for the box is going through committee like all funding requests do, so there's not a decision tonight. I'm just making you aware. It's not on the agenda because it's nothing that we're going to vote on tonight. It has to go through committee first for the funding. <clears throat> Commissioners, you do have the consent agenda in front of you. The items on this agenda have been through uh, the necessary committees and received the votes to be placed on consent agenda. There's, uh, if it still meets with your approval, I'll accept the motion to approve them all in one vote. You approve, sir. Second. Second. 
Any uh, discussion or question? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Let's see. Another person requesting to speak? Yes, sir. Different matter. Ms. Bardron? Oh, we're, you want to blow through legal, the other two things because there's nothing there? <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, as you walk down, I uh, said so there are no legal matters. You don't have any debate items. So it's time for public comments. All right. Um, so Marlena Bergeron, uh, 2545 Willow Creek Court. Um, I have a, my, my husband is a higher risk and I want to protect all of you as well as myself. So I hope you can still hear me and um, I'll do my best to enunciate. I want to thank you all, again, for your intrepid leadership. There's a reason why Evans, as it was mentioned, is number one in the money magazine in the nation. I, I also want to welcome, I know it's been about a year since my last appearance, confession, whatever, but I'm so grateful for um, uh, our Madam Commissioner being on the board, and I appreciate that perspective. That's included now in our planning, in our building, and we have to acknowledge that Columbia County has an amazing confluence of economic opportunity as well as natural resources. And there's a beautiful thing going on with the enchantment and the history, and we are at a wonderful place at this pivotal time in history. And we have fared very well looking across the country, looking across the world at what other people are, are, are dealing with, the fact that we can keep on going. Now, I also have been waiting to see some mention of climate change on any of our agendas because whether it's coronavirus or whether it's climate change, I feel like a community that can talk about things can prepare for things. So I don't know if it's said, I'm gonna say this to make sure, I don't think climate change has been discussed much in this room on Tuesday nights. I don't know if it's mentioned on Thursday nights in planning. I didn't see it mentioned in the Vision 2035 that I filled out. As a constituent, as a parent, I'd like to see more being done and more being discussed. Now, there are things I noticed that nod to a changing planet. And what do I mean? Anthropogenic climate change, so man-made causes. I'm bringing it up because one of the questions on the 2035 survey was about storm runoff as well as tree preservation and wildlife. I think the fact that we love living here is because of those natural resources, and we have to honor the fact that we have a great economy, but that natural economy is so important too. Living infrastructure is as important as the roads and the buildings and the storage facilities and the schools, the people who live here, the living things who live here, and the trees who live here. And why am I here now? Because I've had time to drive around and even though they're gone, I still see the trees on Lewiston. And even though they're gone, I still see the trees on the corner of William Few and Washington. And even though they're gone, the 300 acres that was cleared at White Oak Business Plaza, naming a business plaza after the 100 year growth that was there, isn't the same as having those trees there. Those trees that were serving everybody, those trees that were absorbing carbon dioxide as well, as, well as storm water. I'm not here because I'm being paid by anybody. I'm not campaigning for any political party. I'm campaigning for clean air and clean water. And as I drive around, I wonder what are, is a generation gonna, from now going to see as our values? That a 50-year-old tree was worth sacrificing so we could save five minutes on our commute or looking for a parking spot. That we'd rather get products overnight than preserve some part of those white oaks at the new plaza. The fact that we have maybe a rare boutique, rare book boutique going up that has old books and a particular clientele instead of the living trees that were already there. Now, I understand there's a balance, but I don't think we're finding it, and I don't know if enough people are talking about it and planning for it. And I'd like to see that happen because I don't want, if anything, 
At the end of the day, I don't want any of you or anybody in this room to feel surprised if we ever get 20 inches of rain like Columbia, South Carolina did. And it breaks my heart in many ways that these conversations aren't happening because stormwater, increased rainfall, is a part of this future. And with all due respect, a lot of you will be gone by the time we're facing real consequences about this. And 2020 is going to feel like a hill of beans to the kids and grandkids who are living in 2060 if we don't start addressing this. I don't know if I already said this, but when you see a tsunami, it's probably too late to do anything about it. But if you know there are things happening, you're having more accumulated days of hotter temperatures, and if you're having increased dramatic rainfalls in shorter periods of times, those are real things. All I cared about in that entire survey was that stormwater question, because that water will go in our yards and it will go in our street. And I don't know about you, but I stay awake at night if I know there's seven inches of rain predicted for the next three days. Will I get to drive home and be able to pick up my son from, or will my husband get home from work, or will I be able to get home from work, whatever it needs to be? I don't want us to lose that wonderful number one spot, but I don't want to lose us to lose the soul in Lewiston has no more soul. Everything that made these areas special, when you clear out all the trees, I know the topography is sensitive, but you lose something. You cannot bring it back. And I don't know if we're planting enough trees to compensate for what we're developing. It's that simple. I need to know that you're talking about that. And you don't want to call it climate change because you feel like it's politically loaded word. It's happening. And we can't plan for it if we don't talk about it. I really appreciate all of you. I hope you know that this doesn't go away just because you know, we, we're saving time getting to work faster. Does anybody think about how much time we save as a community? For the most part, a lot of people aren't recycling. 10, 15 minutes every day, nobody's rinsing things out. Are any of these agendas being recycled here? I'm just thinking about it's not always about being faster and getting through things faster. My son's doing three-digit subtractions. He found a calculator to finish the rest of his homework. And I caught him, and I said, you know what? I know that's awesome. You took five minutes. You were resourceful. You got it done fast. But fast and cheap and furious is not going to help us keep that number one. I went kayaking the other day down Betty's Branch. And there are things now that I see and I want to share this with you because I don't even know what and, to And I'm going to have to ask you to come to a conclusion. Okay. I'll make it, I'll, I'll make it quick. Thanks. I don't know if there are enough people involved in our boards. I know we have some, had some experts in the past. I was a big fan of Chris Noah's perspective because of his background in environmental engineering. I want to know that those advocates are being consulted, that you are including that, not just the people and the players who are here to make money. But what I'm saying is this. When I go paddling past the Champions Retreat Golf Course and I see – a hole where they left the golf course, the particular hole cleared all the grass. Why? Because then the element of sport is better. The ball might roll off into the water. Why? Because maybe it's prettier. But that whole stretch means that all that runoff, that all that fertilizer, all those pesticides, it's going right in the water. I know it looks good, but those are the kind of things I want you to be talking about it, because if it looks good, but it doesn't work for us, if it leads to us swimming in water with you know, more chemicals in it, and if we're taking out trees and it leads to us having a higher risk of flooding, I want you to be thinking about that at night. Are we better positioned now for heavy rainfall than we were five years ago? And the honest answer to that is no. We're in worse position. We're not even in a not doing anything uh, dithering phase. We're in an undermining phase. And I would love to be part of more of those efforts to plant trees faster, and I just don't know if we can keep up with you. So my recommendations are to pivot on all clear cutting that's planned and look at it from an investment in the trees standpoint. I wish money grew on trees because you put more stock in it. But I want us to invest in the trees that are there because that is as much investment, not just placeholders. And this is not naive talking. This is when we have heavy rainfall. Those trees are on our side. They're part of the living infrastructure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thanks, all of you. See you again. Okay, commissioners, we, I believe we do have an executive item that we have to discuss on retail matters, so accept a motion to go in executive, se executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Ms. Bergeron, we do recycle, just so you know. Yeah, actually, more going on. <coughs> We did 122 tons last month of recycling material.
She went that way. I think she parked out there. She was, I told her I this was going to be usually a carry, but I thought I saw you parking there. <laughs> Oof. I thought this meeting was going to end early. Yeah. Me too. Mr. Driver, you want to give us a report on our executive session? Yes, we had uh, one property matter to discuss, and there's nothing to discuss further in open session. We do have, uh, I believe, one item on which to vote. Please, whoever has it. Rock and fire. I make a motion to approve additional $12,600 to parcel 54 slash 58 to James G. Mims, Jr. $15,500 to partial 179 to Martha and Felton Lane, Jr. to obtain right-of-way and or easement for the SR-28 Furious Ferry Road widening project. A second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Doctor, how many is this? <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I uh, motion we adjourn, please. Like it. All in favor, raise your right hand. We're adjourned.